This is the Tough Hub, a show brought to you by Tough Africa Global to educate you on real estate matters, to mentor you and inspire you. After 48 years of working and also traveling all over the world, I am ready to share my experience with you, especially those young ones who follow me for inspiration. Let's have Madam Jiran Senghor. Madam Jiran Senghor, as you know, is the managing director of um, Trust Bank PLC. And um, uh, she's the first lady to head that institution. You know, probably I don't know how much you guys know about Trust Bank. Trust Bank was first the Gambia Commercial and Development Bank. Later, it was um, uh, the Meridian um, uh, Bank or the Meridian BIO. Later, um, uh, it was um, turned into the Gambian um, Trust Bank Limited, first headed by a Gambian called Pa Njai, then um, later by Pa Ibu Salah, but now a uh, relatively young lady, very relative. To them, I'm sure they are looking at you as, ah, Mervina. But for us who are sitting on the high table, she's a young lady. But she's doing very well, I'm sure. Those of you who are in social media, have you seen her recently? You've seen her? You know, you know me and my social media stuff. Huh? I remember, you know, I sat on the board of Trust Bank for 18 years. And um, we always, uh, do, I don't know whether you notice, we always sit opposite each other. But, you know, I saw, honestly, I saw in her, you know, value. You know, somebody who could excel, somebody who could do bigger than whatever we could see. And I have a very strong feeling that is, this is just the beginning of what she can deliver. And all of us have seen the image of Trust Bank, how it has been turned around. It's all with her drive and her leadership. So, Madam Sangor, um, uh, Madam, sorry, Madam Jeng, um, uh, um, the podium is yours. Good morning. Um, I'll start with Uncle Taf for that wonderful introduction. Um, good morning also to the other um, speakers. Good morning to you, the future leaders of Gambia. As Uncle Taf said, my name is Njilan Sengor. I am currently the managing director of Trust Bank. Prior to that, I was an auditor. I worked with Deloitte & Touche for eight years. And then I moved to Trust Bank first as the head of finance. I think I did that for nine years. And then I was the deputy managing director for five years. So as you can tell, I'm not as young as it's being implied. So um, I've had a few years of experience. Um, Uncle Taf invited me a few months ago to speak on confidence. And I always tell this story because we were at an event right here. And I, as I was walking out, he ran after me and he said, Angela, 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 I need you to give a talk on confidence. And I said, yes. And everybody who knows me knows I don't like public speaking. I'm not good at it, never will be good at it. But I'm trying because it is an expectation that people have. So I said, OK. But when I got in the car, I was like, did he just say confidence? Because for me, I don't ex especially consider myself to be confident. But during that presentation, I learned something. I learned that confidence was not loud. And at the end of the presentation, I said, yes, definitely I am confident. This time around, they sent me the list and they told me what was available. And I chose empathy. And the reason I chose empathy is because I feel the world needs a lot of it. And it is seriously lacking right now. And that is why the world over, you have leaders that are comfortably watching their people go through hunger, poverty, die because of lack of adequate medical care, fleeing borders to go and be badly treated refugees in somebody else's country. Locally here, it is because of a lack of empathy 
that women are dying in our hospitals, that um, there's so much going on right now. But we have to go back to basics and talk about what empathy is and why it is required. In my job, I used to be trained in specifics. I said I was an auditor before. So I received the best training in terms of auditing standards. Then I went to the bank, I received all kinds of training on bank-related matters. And then one day I woke up and I was a leader and then I realized nobody trained me on how to be a leader at all. They will tell you that the two main expectations of a leader are empathy and perspective. And that is why when I saw the list, empathy jumped out at me. And I decided that that is what I was going to talk about. Empathy, simply defined, is the ability to emotionally understand what other people feel. To see things from their point of view and imagine yourself in their place. Empathy actually originates from a Greek word, empatheia, and that means physical affection or passion. So when we say we are empathetic, it means that we feel the burden that other people feel. We are able to put ourselves in their positions, and we are able to improve human behavior this way because we resonate with other people's suffering or maybe it's success, whatever it is. But at the end of the day, your feelings will change as you interact with people. Their happiness will be your happiness. Their motivation will be their motivation. People often confuse empathy with pity or sympathy, and they're different. I can hear about something bad happening to somebody and I sympathize, but it's more external. I, there's no emotional attachment or no emotional bond with that person, so I, I can sympathize from afar. But when we work with people or we um, interact as family members, then empathy is really what we're talking about. I think society has changed us. Now I'm going to ask you all, and I want an honest answer. Who among you does not have at least one family member that you're not talking to? Honest answer. Yeah? So even in our families, we have a problem being empathetic to everybody. So there is one bhajan who we feel is my mother's enemy and is my enemy. Or there is that one cousin that you cannot get along with because you both hold on to your individual positions. Now imagine my situation where I have moved from being responsible for tasks, and that's easy. I'm the head of finance, I have responsibilities, it's a small manageable team, uh, at the end of the day these are our deliverables, very easy. So imagine moving from that to not managing tasks, but managing people. Managing people is the most difficult thing I have ever had to do in my life very difficult and I don't know if I'm doing it well or not but one thing I do know is that it is a journey that will probably only end when I retire but for now I am responsible for managing people mind you I have had a lot of years of experience in the bank so a lot of these tasks, tasks I can do so I know what it takes I know it is doable but it is no longer my job now I have to make sure is that I manage somebody to be able to take care of that task. There's a motivational speaker called Simon Sinek. He said that leadership is not about taking charge, but about taking care of the people that are in your charge. And that is what I just explained. Empathy creates an environment where workers feel valued and so are more likely to throw themselves more fully in their roles. We can choose to rule with an iron fist. It's a numbers game. You have targets to meet. Meet it. I don't care what it takes. Whether you have emotional issues, you have sickness in your family, you have trouble with um, your, your spouse, 
I don't care. This is your target, meet it. Or you can choose to be an empathetic leader. The one who wants to make sure that you are happy in that position, you are happy doing that job. It is not just a numbers game. The most difficult thing is balancing your leadership style to be able to find out who needs additional support to be able to give you those numbers that you're looking for. So imagine this. Rose, I walk into your office and I say this was your target, you fell short of target this month, you fell short of target last month. I'm giving you one final chance or you're out. Or I walk into your office and I said, oh, I've noticed that your performance is sliding right now. I think you used to do a lot better. Is there anything going on? Is there anything you'd like to discuss? Is there any way I can help you? And it turns out Rose has an issue that is affecting her performance. And maybe all she needs is somebody to listen to her, to help her navigate those issues. And then she's back to top performance. Isn't that a much better way of dealing with people? Mind you, the people around you are watching. How I deal with rules sets the tone for somebody else. And they say she doesn't care about people. She only cares about meeting her targets. See the way she handled rules. If I don't behave, that's what I get. So they don't even see a platform to be able to come and confide in you when they're going through issues. And it's, it's unbelievable here in Gambia that people, they know empathy. I think everybody has characteristics of empathy. And I say this because, say for instance, you have flowers in your house and you see the flower starts to die. You know, we go and turn the soil, we water it, we show it empathy, right? So it starts to bud again. New mothers, you have babies, and nobody has put you in a classroom to teach you how to handle babies. But there's empathy in you, so you know what to do, even without being told. So I don't buy the argument that people have to be trained in order to be able to, um, to, to show empathy. So why don't we? And I think over time, we've been shaped by too many things, by environment, by greed, by corruption, by um, power. And when I talk about empathy, I'm not talking about people in leadership positions only. I'm talking about human beings in general. Because we all have power in one way or the other. I joke around and say that during COVID, the most powerful people were the security guards. Uh, we joke that even in our bank, even the medical doctor had to stand there and have their temperature checked by the security guard before they could come in. So power is not necessarily based on riches or leadership positions. We all have power. And unfortunately, in this society, what we are seeing more and more is that people are using their powers in a wrong way. They are not empathetic. They don't see how they can use those powers. In Wolof, we say, dole puliremla, dole dupulchao. But here, more and more, we are seeing people disrespect you and treat you badly just because they can. It is not about riches or leadership. It is about innate human being characteristics. And we are not doing too well as a nation. Unfortunately, I'm not generalizing, but it is my experience that a lot of us have lost um, our ability to show empathy because we are um, so consumed with our own, own wants, our own rich, um, requirements. Can empathy be learned and improved by coaching or training? Yes, for sure. It always helps, especially in a leadership role. Like I said, I never had that opportunity. But it is a talent that we all have. And it should be identified as a strength in leadership, and it is essential for all leaders especially. These days, um, 
if you speak to somebody and you say to them, you don't have empathy. And the opposite of that, of course, is gonna be words like um, callousness, heartlessness, um, narcissistic behavior. Those are terrible words. So no matter how terrible a person you are, if I use any of those words on you, you won't like it. Even the most terrible person does not want to be faced with what the opposite of empathy is. But in actual fact, that is the behavior that we are demonstrating more and more. What I am trying to do is to make sure that the 400 strong people that I am leading find me approachable to be able to walk into my office. I have an open door policy, but I want them to be able to walk into my office to tell me anything that they want to tell me that is affecting their ability to deliver their best. Can I fix all? No. But sometimes what I do is I listen and I put the tissue box in the middle. So you're crying, I'm crying, and we're just talk, having a, a sad fest. But something about me that I've realized right now is that it is at my saddest that I work harder to make sure that somebody else is not going through what I'm going through. And for me, that's empathy. I'm not perfect. I cannot keep everyone happy. But so long as you recognize that as a character in you, that you want to continue to work on, then that's good. The problem, though, that I see in Gambia is that there are some people that I will call energy vampires. You know, sometimes being nice is equated with being a tui in this country. And that's one of the biggest problems, because you have some people that are in perpetual victimhood world. They wallow in self-pity. There is nothing, absolutely nothing, that you can do to get them out of that world. Sometimes they are constrained by certain things, for sure. But that should not be used as an excuse to ask for favors and expect you to do more than you're doing for anybody else. It, it, it causes me, for, 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 for sure, it causes me sometimes to consider whether or not I should lower my levels of empathy. But I pray always that, that I never get to that stage because for the most part, people are deserving of empathy and how I am. And I pray for the most part that I never look down on people and decide that I'm not going to do it that way. Sometimes you feel used, you feel manipulated, you feel taken for granted. But at the end of the day, um, the majority are deserving of it and that's what I hope that I will always be able to do for them. I'm going to um, talk to you about uh, this quote from Muhammad Ali that I just love. And it goes, the personality of a person, the ways of a person, the thoughts, the deeds, the actions, it's all based around his heart. For what is a man? A man is his heart. A lying, cheating heart means a lying, cheating man. A loving, merciful heart means a loving, merciful man. A living heart means a living man. A dead heart means a dead heart. Regardless to man's title, regardless to man's wealth, rank opposition. If the heart is not great, then he cannot be great. But if the heart is great, then the man remains great under all circumstances, rich or poor, large or small. So it is the heart that makes the one large or small. Do you agree? I think the, that that, that um, quote resonates with me a lot because it talks about what is most important in a human being and that is the heart. We have good hearts, naturally, but we allow society to shape us in a way that makes us behave differently. The other day I was watching a program on TV and there's this, um, who turned out to be a serial killer. And the justification that was provided by the psychiatrist or psychologist, whatever they call them, is that he had um, a terrible childhood. 
and he was abused as a child. And for me, what that meant was, so does it mean then if we have anything difficult or bad in our lives, then that is an excuse to also grow up to be bad or do bad. It shouldn't be. But in this case, that was being used as the justification. I think um, in, in our current generation, uh, millennials and Gen Zs in particular, you're faced with so much out there, especially on social media platforms, that your want to achieve certain levels of what you term as success outweighs how you go about getting it. And that is something that you really have to watch. Do all of you know um, Sam, Samba Jabare Samba? No. You know Aida Samba? You all know the Aida Samba. You know Darling Ko? Uh-huh. That Aida Samba. <laughs> Aida Samba's grandfather is Samba Jabare Samba. And he said, no matter how much you have, you can only sleep in one bed. You can only drive one car. Your stomach can only accommodate so much food. What you leave behind is not yours. What is yours is what you are spending right now. So I ask you, what is the purpose of selling your soul to acquire riches that you're going to leave behind for somebody else? If you're going to acquire power or riches or anything that is to your advantage only, but in doing so, you are throwing on other people, you are stepping on other people, you are inconveniencing other people, you are causing pain to other people. What is the point? You may have your riches, but is it worth it? I think as a country, I would like us to really have a rethink about the way we work. We see it all the time in our hospitals. I work with a charity, um, and we try to help dialysis patients at the, at the hospital. And um, I see sometimes the pain that they go through just to have a, a session on dialysis. And um, my impression is sometimes that even if you are constrained by equipment, by um, supplies, there is something that can be done to ease the mind of the patient, to help and direct the patient on other alternatives. But I see sometimes the shabby way in which patients are treated. We are losing patients as young as 16 years old just because somebody somewhere doesn't care. We are losing our women um, in this day and age, giving birth and creating life should not be a death sentence. But we are losing our women just because some people don't care enough, don't treat people with empathy to be able to see how else they can help them, to make things easier for them. In the offices, we see it. Somebody has done work and they are due for payment. And the person, the accounts clerk or somebody who should sign off the payment decides that unless they get their cut, that payment is not going to happen. So you have this person who has already spent resources going back and forth, back and forth, forth and somebody somewhere has decided that they are not going to do it because they have not received their cut. Have you tried processing land papers in this country? Have you? I, I, I tried to get a lease, and I think two years later, they told me the documents disappeared. So we have lost our ability to feel and put ourselves in other people's positions. And it's largely driven by nothing but our thirst for wealth. Wealth that we will leave behind, or wealth that is ill-acquired, and one day we will have to account for those sins, and I'm not sure that it will end well for some of us. So at the end of the day, empathy is very simple and something that we all have. I think here what we are talking about is there's a choice between those who choose to use it and those who have mastered the art of hiding it somewhere deep in their recesses because it does not suit their pursuit of wealth and power. So as you young leaders step out there 
into the corporate world. I'm gonna plead with you that wherever your empathy is hidden deep in your recesses, that you bring it out. You operate always on the basis that your focus is going to be on helping people as much as you can help them. Even if it means financially you're worse off, trust me, emotionally and mentally, you should be better off. And in the long run, it will come back. There's this um, social media post that I read the other day. And uh, a man was in his deathbed. And he was saying to his daughter, um, I'm sorry I didn't leave you with the riches of this world. And the daughter said, yes, you didn't. So so and so's father left mansions and left money in the bank account and left so many things. So you just keep quiet and die. A couple of years later, the daughter went to apply for a job. And they said to her, what's your name? She gave it. Oh, who's your father? She said it. And immediately the CEO said, oh, are you serious? Your father did A, B, and C for me, and I am in this position today, thanks to your father. Opened up doors for her. And she regretted how she treated her father because she was weighing what her father did for her in terms of financial and materialistic wealth. She didn't realize that her father worked all his life to create a name for himself as somebody who was empathetic, who had faith, and who believed in helping others. And that was her visa to her new life. So as you start your careers, please, empathy is one um, core value that really I think you should always, always promise yourself that you will focus on and you will make sure it's the overriding character and trait in everything that you do. You may not be able to give it all the time, like I said, in this country sometimes you're treated as being toy if you're too nice. But you should be able to treat people as you see them. And you should be able to, for the most part, help other people if you're in a position to do so. I'll leave you with just this one final quote. The purpose of human life is to serve and to show compassion and the will to help other people. Never look down on anybody unless you're helping them to get up. Thank you. Thank you for watching The Tough Hub. Until we come your way on our next episode, subscribe, like, and share.